Or, all right, since since we're both recording, I guess we're both hosts simultaneously. All right. <laughs> so, anyway, dude, um, it's it's awesome to finally get you on here, Mr. Yeah. Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess um, a quick quick intro. Uh, please tell us about like your YouTube channel and um, you know the style that you teach. Sure. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so my YouTube channel is uh, Long uh, Screamer Gung Fu, um, and it's kind of just my ramblings on martial arts and what I'm doing. Um, I uh, primarily teach uh, Serata Screamer, okay. um, and um, a little bit of uh, like JKD or different stuff that was influenced by uh, by Bruce Lee. Yes. And uh, so those are the, the two, you know, primary things I, I, I kind of do. I'm also, uh, uh, I, I started in a Hirona Screamer, and it's a thing that I, I find myself going back to all the time. I, you know, would like to finish it if I ever get to. Okay. That'd be cool. But, uh, but yeah, mainly it's Serata, like JKD stuff. Nice, nice, nice. Now, uh you know, you, I've seen some of your videos and you seem to be uh, a big fan of Bruce Lee. Yeah. <laughs> and so could we say that he was one of your big inspirations or uh, one of the reasons you got into martial arts to begin with? Yeah, definitely. I would definitely say he was. Uh, um, I, uh, my, my train when I was a kid. Uh, in karate and stuff, I didn't stick with it. And then I actually did some FMA as a kid, um, not like formal, but mm -hmm. with uh, some some friends of mine. Um, and then uh, years later, uh, my I was doing some different like self help stuff, and my uh, my brother sent me one of uh, Bruce Lee's books, okay. and um, uh, I think it was the the Tao of uh, Kung Fu. And uh, so I was working on a list at the time, like, a, you know, 10 things you want to do in your life list type of thing. And uh, I put martial arts down on there, you know, as, def as definitely one of the things I wanted to get, learn martial arts, get back into it and really learn something. Nice. And, and uh, so that kind of started it. And then I was, you know, met, I was kind of going to some like, you know, uh, boxing gyms and stuff, uh, different little gyms that were popping up that those were getting popular because of, of MMA and stuff. This was like back in like 2006, 2007. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, it's kind of funny cause I, I ended up starting in a screamer first. Uh, right. Um, right. But yeah, it was, de it was definitely an influence of Bruce Lee. Uh, and you know, my brother sending me the book right when I was you know, doing these, these self-help steps, it was kind of something I was into then. Yeah. And, uh, so that really set me on a path. And, uh, then years later, uh, I found out that like a lot of the earliest screamer guys were actually, you know, Bruce Lee students as well. Uh, or second generation of his students right. as well. Right. 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 <laughs> And so when I found that out, I was like, okay, well, now I really want to learn his stuff as well. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, over here in the U.S., because of Professor Dan Inosanto, definitely Filipino martial arts and Jeet Kune Do is very connected, yeah. tied together, right? For sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they definitely have that, that connection. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so, okay, you know, just some random questions, you know, just, uh, pretty chill, uh, laid back discussion type of stuff. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, what would you say is the appeal of FMA? You know, cause we, we've been doing FMA for quite some time and we got all these other styles to choose yeah. from, but you were saying you keep coming back to like Eskrima and stuff. So what's the appeal there? Would you say? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's kind of funny for me. It started as a as a kid, right? Like I was I was watching, uh, um, like you know, for me the big martial arts movie was like uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh. And you have the scene with the one of the you know the the the, 
the leaders of the uh, Lords of Death where he's flipping around the, the Bali song, right? Right. And it's like, oh man, what is that thing that he, you know that I was always more amazed with the butterfly knife and those mo- and those movies than than like the nunchucks. Okay. okay. And um, and then um, so uh, I had a lot of Filipino friends, in school, and uh, a couple of them, you know, were started showing me things that that they had learned. Uh, you know, either um, before they moved to the U.S. or things that maybe you know their older relatives or their their fathers or whatever had showed them with the with the butterfly knife, and so that was really my introduction to uh, Filipino martial arts was the Bali song and learning uh, kind of informally, you know, some different stuff to do wow. with the openings and stuff. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that always amazed me. Uh, I think you know, eventually, I also got like a, a, around that time I got like a book. I don't remember. I think it was uh, Jeff Imada's book uh, on the Bali song, and uh, so I was, you know, I learned that early on, and then, um, but at the time I was as a kid, I took like karate and stuff. Okay, that's what my my dad put me in, and it's kind of funny because I I didn't like it. I didn't like having to wake up on Saturday mornings and going to, you know, do this. Like I was like, I want to watch Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, I, I did karate a little bit, but I really stick with it. Um, but then years later, I wanted to get, I was, you know, wanted to get back into martial arts, and I, I was reading like I, you know, so I was, I, you know, was like, okay, I want to do this, and I was researching like I had done a little bit in the boxing gyms and stuff, but I was like, I was looking at like what's something you could do where you don't have to be like super flexible or super agile or or uh, something you could do forever, right? And and FMA came up a lot, right? Something you, as an art you can practice, you know, longevity-wise, like when you're older. Wow. Um, and uh, you didn't have to, uh, you know, I read things like that, like, you, you know, you don't have to be, you know, in the best uh, condition, you know, conditioning-wise and all that to, yes. to, to train it. And, uh, and so I was reading about, you know, the Filipino martial arts, and then, uh, you know, I made that connection with as being a kid, like, oh, well, I was already doing a form of this, you know. Um, and so, uh, um, that's that's what, you know, I, I decided to uh, to pick, you know, to get back into the Filipino martial arts. And, and also, it just, uh, I think there's a coolness factor to it, right? Like, <laughs> okay, yeah. Because yeah. you're training with different, you know, sticks and train knives and different things. And it, go on. Oh, you froze for a second, but you're back. Back, okay. You're back. Um, dude, for you to think about, because you have to be pretty young when you were going, what martial arts style doesn't require a whole lot of flexibility or agility and has longevity. That's kind of an interesting thought process there for a young guy to <laughs> it think. Is, right? Yeah, it's not normal right there. Yeah. yeah. I was in my twenties. It's not like it was something I really needed to think about. But right. yeah, I don't know why. I, I I did. I was researching that and you know, FMA came definitely was there and um Wow. Uh, and then, you know, I just made the connection. Yeah. To you know, I'd already learned. I, I had books like I had the Iron Secrets of Iron and Screama book, um, and that's actually how I got started. So at the time, I was I was living in the Bay Area, and I think in the back of that book it has like a list of at the time of the people who had you know graduated or became instructors. Okay. And uh, so I I started calling around and and I found out that you know somebody said oh you know there's a, there's a guy that lives in the town over from you that that teaches it. Wow, and so I that I uh, got connected with him, who ended up being my first teacher, form, formal teacher in it. Um, but yeah, definitely a funny thought process. I don't I don't even remember why I was, <laughs> that, but, uh, <laughs> you, but it was funny. You being in California, also, I mean, that was a good place because it's hard to find schools to this day. You know, Filipino martial arts yeah. schools all, around the U.S. But uh, so in Big Trouble in Little China, was that? Jeff Imana with the Bali song? Yeah. It was yeah. him. He, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he wrote the book, and, and I've seen the book yeah. too. And y- you got the book and practiced from there. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, so next question. Let, let me go into this, right? 
Uh, what would you say makes FMA a good choice for like self-defense or actual like combat? Like what what gives it that realistic flair in a sense? Would you say? Um, I think it's uh, you know it it depends. You know, I think for the most part, it's um, if you're like learning it, uh, like. I guess I don't want to say legitimate, like a g legitimate version of it, but you know, if you're really learning Filipino martial arts, um, you're training with the weapons, and and then you're also training empty hand, and uh, some of the styles, like you know, one of the styles I do, the Rona style, like a big thing is it, they even have like multiple opponents and stuff that training that you have to do, and I think all of that kind of is you know. Uh, the things that you really have to worry about in, in, in the, in the, you know, out in the real world, when you get into a, a scenario, so, you know, a self-defense scenario where you actually have to, you know, worry about defending yourself. And I think some other martial arts, right. They kind of cater to like, you know, what is going on in the school or the dojo. Um, yeah. And you could spend, you know, in this amount of time, before you get to, you know, this amount of stuff that you're actually going to use, uh, in, in, you know, God forbid, if you get in one of these situations, right? right. And so I think to, for me, that's a draw too. And I think for a lot, of, you know, I think that's what FMA has to offer, right? If you look at people that teach combatives or different stuff, they all come to FMA to pull something from it. Mm. You know, the, the, the majority of people, even people that don't want to say that they are doing that, I right. feel do right. Yes, yes. I mean, the f fact is, it is to this day used by you know military and police yeah. of all over the world. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's uh, yeah. I feel also that it's a very practical style in that sense, and and I think also like you don't have to become like. You know, someone who's been trained in it for like 30, 40, 50 years in order to be able to use it. You know, I, I feel like yeah. the moment you start, you pick up a weapon and you, you start from there. Yeah. <laughs> right. So just being comfortable with that and being able to, you know, maneuver the weapon without hurting yourself is already a big plus to me. Yeah. It reminds me of something that I heard that, you know, Angel Kabbalah used to say was that he, he wanted, um, he wanted a person to be ready to defend themselves in six months to a year, right. Versus, you know, training for years and years, like, you know, so it was, you know, for him, it was important that, that somebody would be able to, to, you know, get the basics and be able to defend themselves in a short amount of time. And I think that's, an, that's important part of the art right yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah um so like to me this is i i don't know what you think about this but when i think of fma and you know like people ask me like what style do you teach and i tell them like eskrima and they're like what is that right what is that yeah and, and i'm kind of like well you've actually seen it in a lot of hollywood movies yeah. and they're like john wick fans or you know Born Identity or Resident Evil or all those movies they've seen, you know, FMA is used in those films. So yeah, it's all over Hollywood, but at the same time, a lot of people still don't know it. That's kind of weird, yeah. don't you think? It, it is, and I, <laughs> well, I think I think the reason for that is because there's other things that are flashy or popular, or you know, like when you. Go watch a movie like Ninja Assassin, right? Mm -hmm. you, you've got this whole idea in your head. Ninjas jumping off of rooftops and, you know, their swords and doing all this stuff. But the reality is that the fight choreographer that's doing that, that's, you know, getting those guys ready for their scenes and stuff, he's probably got a lot of Filipino martial arts training, right? <laughs> or, you know, that's, that's you know, like... A, uh, scenario I'm making up in my head there, but I think that's a reality, right? Like you know, when you look at at these movies like Book of Eli and and, and other ones where you know what like, for sure they're using FMA uh, as as the base of their fight choreography, right? Yeah. Um, but again, 
they're not the movie's not saying that it's not like you know this is a movie about you know ethnic filipino martial arts right it's it's so it's always kind of in the in the background right and not you know up front and and that's why i think you know is that case it's kind of funny because you look at like this cartoon that came out raya i think it's is it raya right raya and the and the last dragon okay and and so that she's totally doing fma with her dad at the beginning oh okay right yeah and uh and you know i have like friends and stuff that have that have uh seen the movie and they're like oh uh is that is that what you do brooks <laughs> but, yeah, that's what you know that's it right yeah. but it, again it's like so you know obscure it's not it's not an art that that is really you know uh portrayed in the movies right it's it's so weird, you know exactly what you're what you're saying. Even in uh, Dune, the the recent yeah yeah I mean yeah yeah the, the recent Belinda Walker or something right yeah I mean yeah. Uh, you you see the the knife fighting and I mean this this is all if you've trained in FMA whatever style you yeah. recognize you go oh okay we do something similar even even if it's not exactly the same you know that's FMA period you know yeah. And yeah, like like you're saying, a, a lot of these Hollywood people, uh, the fight court, you know, choreographers and stuff, they've trained in it. You think that's an extension of like uh, when Bruce Lee became, you know, the like the number one guy in Hollywood when he did Enter the Dragon, and then so after that he left his footprints. So do you think they they went to Dan Professor Danny Nosanto and so he like continue that you think yeah i think i think i think dan had a had a lot of uh helped it right because he had a lot of connections uh and also because like you said like he was he was bruce's you know protege yeah and um so i feel like even if the industry didn't go to dan that the people were going to go to him right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, oh, that's the guy that was, you know, he was, you know, then the game of death came out. And so people visibly see him with Bruce, right? right? right. And, and, <laughs> and so they're like, oh, I want to be Bruce Lee. How do I learn to do these things? You know, and then you, you, he's in magazines, starting to pop up in magazines, you know, he, he, you know, so he really, you know, did all that, right? He, he, you know, really uh, pushed the art. Yeah as martial arts in general right right and he was doing you know, these global seminar circuits you know um so i feel like yeah I, definitely i feel that that was a big he was a big part of it right was uh you just had to watch the movie and say okay well bruce is gone well who's that guy i'm gonna you know i want to go to that guy right right yeah and and I can also see like maybe a casting agent. They they go okay. We're gonna hire. We need to hire a fight choreographer. Who are we gonna hire? Yeah. And then this guy says, you know, uh, lineage to Bruce Lee. And then they go, yeah. oh well, this guy may have may understand the film industry better. Not not that his style is better, but yeah, is is more closer to the you know oh Bruce Lee connection. So they they hire this guy. And this guy who trained under De Professor Danny Santo now is going to ha have heavily an FMA influence. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, so it yeah. kind of makes sense, I, I think, also. Yeah. But Like, look, look at Bruce's son, right? When uh, uh, Which movie is uh, Is it Rapid Fire? He's on a catwalk. Yeah. And he's fighting some guy, you know, and he, and he's, he, he, like, breaks off pieces of pipe and he starts, you know, doing the... Showdown. Showdown on Little the Tokyo. The showdown? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Showdown on Little Tokyo. Okay, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, so it's there. I mean, anybody, you know, touches that lineage has a piece of this art, right? Right. And, uh, and you know, if you want, you know, if you, if you can get yourself, your name out there in the industry, then... then you know, there. You know, then you you have you know the the that martial art background to go with you know whatever other skills you bring to the right to the industry. Because it also uh, it blends so well with other styles. Do you feel that way? Yeah. 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 I mean, look at you know Remy coined that perfect phrase, or one of his, I guess you know one of his students coined this phrase, and he ran and he ran with it. But the the art within your art, and it's funny because you can really do that, right? You can go find anybody that does kung fu or karate or something and 
you could start doing bits of FMA and they're like, Oh, that looks like something that, that we do. Um, yes. And so I think that it, that that's part of it too. Right. Is like, you know, even if you've got some people that you're working with that do completely different stuff and you're training them for a movie, like with, I feel like FMA is one of those things where you can easily just start showing people stuff and they can connect to it. Right. And right. you guys are now working together. That's interesting. Um, why, why would you say that is because like, so like, let's say it wasn't FMA, let's say it was Kung Fu, right? And then you could kind of see it where the, the instructor is going to be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a Kung Fu move and we're going to, we're going to do it. You know, we're going to start Kung Fu style. So, you know, we, we got to do it like this, you know, or if it's a Japanese method or a Korean method or whatever, and they really got to emphasize the style part and, and you're like, okay, I'm learning something new. Whereas the FMA, like you said, might be like easier to relate to compared to some of these other ones. Do you think that is the case or, or maybe not? <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And no. Okay. I mean, okay. you could probably find, you could probably find, um, somebody from, from one of these other different styles or systems or whatever that could, you know, break theirs down or articulate it like that to people where it's yes. easily shareable. Yes. But I feel like, I feel like, um, a lot of it has to do with how it was passed. Maybe, maybe how it was passed down through the generations. Right. So right. some of these other styles and systems were very like, you got to do it this way. You got all these formalities. Right. And, yeah. you know, F FMA may have become that, but, you know, if you look back, how was it traditionally trained was like, okay, like, you know, I had to go to this island, I had to be there for a little bit, I trained with the people there, and then, you know, work or life, whatever, took me over here, so I go over there, and I pick up bits and pieces from, from somebody over there, and so I feel like it's just, um, people might not agree with that, but I feel like it's just, it, it it's part of it, right, like, wow, the, the ability to adapt and, and, and you know, with whoever I feel like is, is part of it. That's, so I've that's never, how I kind of look at it. I, I never thought of it that way. And you know what you're saying because of the many islands. And I, I don't think a lot of people realize there's what, like 7,000 islands yeah. <laughs> in the Philippines. It's like an insane amount of islands, but, and, and maybe someone may disagree with this, but like over here in the U S at least the way it was taught to me also was that I was told from the very beginning, mix it. And in fact, the teacher that taught it to me, it wasn't even his main style. He was, he was a Kuk Su Wong guy. So the FMA was like an uh, additional style. And that's the way it was taught to me, was from the very beginning. Now, some people in the Philippines, you know, they, they probably don't teach it that way. You know, they, yeah. it's, it's a a standalone style don't mix it you know like that but for me it was that way and in a in my area a lot of people learned it that way too yeah i mean i feel you know like time and um and time and kind of you know the economy of martial arts has changed it to where it's like you know my style right like angel had a saying don't mix my stuff like spaghetti <laughs> Right. Like, uh, yeah. but, but, uh, you know, time, time did that. Right. But if you like one of the styles that I train in, if you, like, look at that style, it, it's comprised of 20 different styles. Okay. Through, I forget how many different teachers, but so obviously that individual trained with a lot of different people. Right. right? <laughs> so that and I look at that and then I look at like how things probably were back in, in you know, in the day, and I say, okay, I can see that. Like, you know, if you had to move around and you were going to these different ports and places and stuff and training with different people uh, informally, you know, then you would be picking up different things and you'd be putting it together different. And the way, even if it, even if you, you know, train with your family members, your, your, you know, like your brothers or your uncles or whatever, the way they do it would be different. And you can see that when you look at, at families like that, right? right. Like look at the, the, the press, I have limited, uh, press a ex exposure i have some through through leo fong but um 
But I know enough to know that, like, all the brothers different, right? And right. some of them had different teachers. They might have all had one or two of the same teacher, but they also had their own teachers that they had found. And so that made their, their versions a little different, right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I think, you know, everything that we're saying right now, we kind of go back to, you know, what the first statement, which is it's maybe some people would listen to what we just said and they go, so th doesn't that just mean that it's not like authentic or it's not pure, you know, because it's like from all over. And, yeah. and the way that I'd like to, for me, the way that I take it is that it just means that it's that easy to blend and it's easy for people to relate to and pick up and, you know, go train here or go train at this school. And, and it's, you know, like um, you're going to find a lot of commonality that way. Yeah. So that that's kind of the way that, that I see it, you know. Um, and regardless, as far as authenticity goes, it, you know, I kind of see martial arts as a craft that you build. So each, every individual is building a craft. And, and that's where the authenticity really lies in. Unless you're trying to write a book or yeah. you're preserving a lineage, which I understand, you know, so you, you want to do it exactly like this grandmaster or this master or whomever. And, and you're just trying to get, for the record, you want to keep it pure. I, I get it. But if not, and you, you just want to use it, then you got to make it your own. And, and that was one of the things that uh, Professor Remy Presas said, was make it your own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, and you could, you, you know, we could, you could look at Bruce Lee, right? Because he had all these different little That's isms right. that he used to say and, and you know, a, a, like about that same thing, right? You mm -hmm. know, how you have to, you know, uh, you know, absorb what's useful, right? And eventually make it your own, right? Right. Like, uh, and so, you know, it's one of those reoccurring themes, right? Um, and I, I think that's what, uh, that's what makes it, what we were talking about, I feel like that's what makes it, uh, you know, really adaptable and, and, a, and a, a, a great uh, art to use in the, in, in the industry, in the, you know, in, in the entertainment industry, because you could do, you can use it for so many different things, right? Yeah. There's a, there's a movie with uh, Melissa McCarthy, where she's like a spy or something, and she has to fight some <laughs> okay. guy in the kitchen, right? And yeah. they had, you know, they had, they had a, you know, they were training her in FMA to do her fight scenes, but you know, she's using like pots and pans and the kitchen knives or something or, or spatula or something. <laughs> right. But, <laughs> nice. So it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just easily ad adaptable. And I think that's what, you know, makes it a draw to like, you know, law enforcement agencies or military as well. Right. It's, right. You know, you can, you can, you can have them train in, in all this different stuff and then, you know, have them train in, in FMA for weapons and it just it makes it easily uh, adaptable. Yes, yes. So, okay, um, you know, I, let, let me go to the last question here for, for discussion, okay? Um, all right. What, what do you think, you know, needs to be done for FMA to become better known? Um, pro you know, probably just, just things that are, are, uh, are showing the art as the art talking about, like, you know, there's, there's really not a whole lot of, of, uh, things in the entertainment or pop, you know, pop culture that you can point out FMA that where it's named as FMA. Right. right. And I think, you know, maybe that could take it to the next level because it's already if you're a martial artist, you you know, what you've heard of. FMA, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you you know, if. For the for the normal everyday person, it's probably they need to see it portrayed more as itself and then uh, that will boost it to the next level. Okay. And there's, there's not a whole lot of that. I mean, even if like when you, I've, I've seen some comic books that have come out and stuff, Yeah. Um, but they're always like independent, limited run things. There's nothing 
there's you know movies are there's a you know few in between right like i feel like that's what's missing is that it really needs to be portrayed for what it is and that will boost it to the next level where more people know about it okay so so you're saying like the name needs to be attached on there so not like dune where you know they they showed it but they didn't put the name on it so it it just looked like futuristic yeah. knife fighting or something and that's it yeah 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 i mean i you know the way that it's that it's taught also the disadvantage there right because it's not like it's not a dojo art it's not like a strip mall art you don't you know drive to the nearest strip mall to see what's there for your kids to train and then find an FMA school, right? It's usually like, you know, it's usually taught in the parks or garages or if it, you know, it might be like out of school, but it's not really the art of the school. Maybe it's, you know, the, the it, it, there's a separate class that happens, you know, once or twice a week there and like with me. a guest <laughs> teacher or something. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and so I don't know, like I don't see it becoming that type of art, you know, like, like where, you know, it's, it's, a you know, like chains and, and all that. It's just not something that I think is going to happen. So then that's why I would say the factor that needs to happen is where it just starts needing to be portrayed as itself rather than, you know, ninjutsu or, or, right. you know, sword fighting or, you know, future, you know, guys in space fighting with, with, you know, right. stuff. If you remember Batman, the KFM style, the KC fighting method. Yeah. yeah. That that became, that exploded, right? Because of that movie. And they didn't announce it in the movie, but it was the making of. They did an excellent, like a documentary behind the scenes where they talked yeah. about it. And they, they were like, this is a fighting style that looked, it was new at the time and it looked brutal. And they thought it would be excellent for this movie, and the movie was an obvious hit, so it worked. So a lot of a lot of things came together for that, you know. So yeah, uh, yeah maybe you know FMA needs something like that, but then at the same time, you know, you were saying that a lot of FMA is taught like in the garages and stuff. Isn't KFM that way too? It's not like you don't see like all these you know schools like Krav Maga or something. Yeah, I mean that's true. I don't I don't know a whole lot of, about it. You yeah. Know? Um, but uh, I I would say that that part is for sure true. Like you don't you don't see a lot of you know what's it called KC right. KC uh, fighting schools. Um, so, um, but I mean, it exp- I would feel still like it exploded sense to us because we're martial artists. But I feel like it's the same thing. Like if I, you know talk to somebody at work and they were like, what do you do? And I, and I said, Oh, I do Kisi. They'd be like, what, what is that? Right. 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 <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's one of those interesting things, but I feel like, uh, that's what's really missing is, is it, you know, really getting its, its, its place out there. Right. Maybe it needs, I don't know, like a couple really good movies that are just focused on it or something. And the garage training, by the way, um, I think that has a certain appeal to me. Um, you know, and, and for me, as the, the person teaching it, I like those kinds of classes. I, you know, I've owned the dojo before, and I've taught at a dojo. And then I'm, I'm also, right now, I'm teaching more. It's not a garage, but, you know, at my place now, so it's a lot more private. And I, I prefer that over the, you know, the clean cut academy kind of thing yeah um it it has that kind of underground feel what, what do you think about that <laughs> yeah I, I i i agree with that like that's <laughs> you know like it's uh it's also maybe a throwback right because you look at you know when you look at things like karate kid yeah uh you know he was training with miyagi and his you know in his uh backyard his backyard right, right? yeah or, or at the beach you know right um like it has that that draw to it, right? Where you're like doing something <laughs> that everybody else doesn't have access to or knows about. It's kind of cool, like that. Yeah. I I have I taught for a little bit at a at a at a school, a local school. It was a like a kind of like an MMA school. 
Yeah. So I taught sticks there, and um, and I yeah, I mean, when I look back on it, I didn't like it, right? Because it's you know, I you I had to do what you know there were like perimeters and stuff you know put in place, and you had to teach a certain way. And I, I like just being able to to do what you know work on what I want to work on, um, and I so. I don't have a garage, but I, you know, we do like outside, like in the park or, or, or at the basketball courts here. Yeah. The place. And, um, I, you know, that's, I, I, I like it. And I, that's how it was, you know, originally taught. And that's how I'm going to continue teaching. It, man, it's so it's like the grunge of the martial arts world, you know, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> so, anyway, um, dude, we're, we're past the 30 minute mark. I think this is a good place. For, for a first uh, uh, talk yeah. like this. Bro, it was a pleasure. Thank you again, Mr. Brooks. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was so awesome. Wampire. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. Wampire, over and out. Later. All right.